I'm standing on the towpath of La Basse Canal in northern France to recount a wonderful tale of bravery and an even more remarkable story of human kindness at the height of the Great War. Just over a century ago, on the opposite side of this canal, Captain Arthur Kilby displayed such outstanding courage that he would later be awarded the Victoria Cross. After his heroism during one of the great battles of the First World War, Captain Kilby was listed as missing in action, something which I can now reveal led to a heart-rendering exchange of letters between his loving parents in England and a veteran German general who they had met in Italy eight years before the start of the war. Even though the two countries were involved in a bitter conflict that would eventually claim some 16 million lives, General Mentz went to extraordinary lengths to find out what had happened to Captain Kilby. The story begins in earnest at dawn on September the 25th, 1915, the first day of the Battle of Luz. On a cold, damp morning, a battalion of the South Staffordshire Regiment attacked a heavily defended enemy position at around 6.30 a.m. Even though an unfavorable wind meant the Allies' chlorine gas attack, their first of the war went badly wrong, affecting more of their own soldiers than the Germans. Captain Kilby, 30, born in Cheltenham, Gloucestershire, was a privately educated career officer and company commander who had already been awarded the Military Cross. He led his men along the narrow towpath under an intense enemy fire from both sides of the canal. Early in the offensive, Captain Kilby was wounded in the hand, but still he and his men pressed on towards the enemy wire. The situation eventually became hopeless, and by 10 a.m. the order was given to withdraw. Captain Kilby was one of the many whose whereabouts were not known. Back at their home in Leamington Spa, Captain Kilby's parents, Sanford and Alice, having been told that their son was missing, waited and waited for more news. So they decided to request help from friends on the continent, and in particular, the veteran officer, General Mentz. They were able to communicate with the general through a Dutch friend in neutral Holland, who also translated the letters. On October the 1st, 1915, Mr. Kilby wrote to General Mentz, reminding him that they had played chess together in Villa Castagnola in Lugano in 1906, and then he asked him for help. Our countries are at war, but I do not feel that necessarily changes our feelings of humanity and sympathy between German and English gentlemen. He then provided the details on his son's disappearance, adding, he is my only son. I appeal to you as an officer to help a fallen officer in trouble, and as a father, I appeal to you to help his son. The general made extensive inquiries, and in a letter dated November the 19th, 1915, he replied, I will do anything in my power to relieve your worries about your son's welfare. However, the general warned, what worries me is that your son has not yet written to you himself. All prisoners are allowed to write to their relatives. I don't want to conceal from you that it is not a good sign. On November the 25th, Mrs. Kilby wrote to the general to thank him for his two most kind letters, adding, I can assure you the object of your search is worthy of it. He is respected and beloved by all ranks in his regiment, and his loss is deeply deplored, and in private life he has a blameless character, his faults being few and trifling. In another letter to the General, dated December the 16th, Mrs. Kilby had encouraging news from the Army. Captain Kilby was wounded in the leg, 
and the informant, a private in the regiment, saw him taken prisoner by the Germans. She added, Pray that it may prove so, and this may help you in the kind search you are making, and for which we cannot thank you sufficiently. However, on February the 2nd, 1916, all hope for Captain Kilby's survival was ended in a letter from General Mentz. Finally, I got a message about your son today, and I'll share it with you immediately, even though it'll be difficult for me, he wrote. The general had been told by the commander of the regiment confronting the 2nd Battalion South Staffordshire Regiment that Captain Kilby had been killed during the battle and later buried. Adding his commiserations, the general said, it might give you comfort that your son died a hero in front of his comrades. On February the 21st, Captain Kilby's father replied to the general, thanking him from the bottom of my heart for all your kindness. He wrote, my greatest friend could not have responded with greater kindness or alacrity. In time, it emerged that the enemy had constructed a simple wooden cross where Captain Kilby had fallen that read, The Kilby family may think of their son with pride, as we remember him with respect. It was some consolation to his family that Captain Kilby was awarded a posthumous Victoria Cross in March 1916, when his citation revealed that one of his feet had actually been blown off in the battle. Here at Loose Memorial, the name of Captain Kilby is inscribed along with more than 20,000 officers and soldiers who were killed and have no known grave. However, long after the war ended, Captain Kilby's remains were found in February 1929 and his identity was established by his discs and uniform. I purchased Captain Kilby's medal group at auction seven years ago and I feel privileged to be the custodian of this courageous officer's gallantry and service medals. Before leaving northern France, I placed a wreath on Captain Kilby's grave at the Arras Road Cemetery, where he now lies. The tender exchange of letters between Captain Kilby's desperate parents and a kindly enemy officer reminds us that even in the heat of war, humanity and compassion can prevail.